Hello everybody and welcome back. So it's VIB sale time once again and I'm here to give you all of my makeup recommendations this time around. I am going to have two recommendation videos going up this week. So today is going to be focused on makeup and Sunday's video is going to be focused on hair products, body products, fragrance, and skincare. I know these videos are usually on the longer side so I wanted to split it up in two just to make it a bit more palatable. I am going to overlay the sale dates on screen right now so you can pause to screenshot or read and I'll also have it listed in the description box as well. So before we get into it, grab your notebook, grab some snacks, whatever you need, and let's get into it. So I went through my collection and I grabbed all of my favorites from every category. I'm going to be going in order of application so we don't get confused. So I'm going to start off with primer. And when it comes to primers, I am very picky because you don't really need a primer in your life. If you have a good skincare base going in, your makeup is going to turn out great. But there are two that actually make a huge difference in my makeup. So the first one is you guessed it, the Milk Makeup Hydro Grip. This is my favorite for longevity. I always reach for this when I need to glue my makeup onto my face and it always comes with me if I'm going to be going on a tropical vacation. This will just ensure that my makeup will look good all day. If you have a long day ahead of you, this one is a fantastic base. And the other one I wanted to mention is great if I'm feeling like my skin is looking textured and I just wanna smooth it out. My favorite blurring and diffusing primer is the Rare Beauty Pore Diffusing Primer. This one works the best with a majority of my foundations and it does a really quick and effortless job at just blurring out my entire base and it also provides a really nice canvas for my foundation to layer on top of it. I'm wearing this underneath of my foundation today and I'm looking very, very smooth if I do say so myself. Out of all of the blurring and softening primers I have ever tried, this one is by far my favorite. Now let's move on to base products and the first one I wanna talk about is the Rose Ink Skin Enhanced Luminous Tinted Serum. This has replaced all of my love for all of my other tinted moisturizers or tinted serums. It truly does enhance my skin in the most effective way. Every time I use this, I'm blown away by the experience and the look of my skin. I think the first time I tried this on on camera, I compared it to the M Cosmetics tinted sunscreen. The other day I tried on the M Cosmetics tinted sunscreen and I actually prefer this far more over that now, which is a huge, huge thing for me. I felt kind of sad in that realization, but this is so incredible. The way that this wears on my skin is unlike any other tinted serum I have tried. It truly does blur out my skin and it also wears really well on my oilier skin type, which I wouldn't expect from something that's mostly a serum. It corrects my discoloration and my acne scar and even active acne the perfect amount, but it still just looks like my skin when this is on. And this is the absolute perfect shade match for my skin. I think I'm going to be picking up a couple backups of this this sale around. I also wanna grab a darker shade for my summer skin while I can get a little bit of a discount. I feel like I could talk all day about this stuff, but it, I've never been so impressed by a foundation or a tinted serum, sorry. <laughs> so now for foundations, I have two. The one I'm wearing today is the Dior Forever Skin Glow. I have been loving my experience with this one. I love how it's not so, so, so glowy, but it does add a really healthy sheen to your skin and it just overall corrects your face. It does have quite a bit of coverage, but once it's on your skin, it doesn't look like a uh, a visible layer. It sits really nicely, it wears beautifully. This is what I wore on my birthday and it lasted all night. It is also very quick to apply. It has such a nice thin consistency. As of recent, this has been one of my go-to foundations if I want an overall perfected base. And the last foundation I had to mention is the LYS Triple Fix Foundation. This is still one of my top ones. I think I have four or five in my collection now. I just need a shade to match me at all times of the year. It's the best like dewy looking foundation. It's extremely long wearing for something that looks so dewy. And I also reach for this one a lot because you can apply it very sheerly or you can build up the coverage to a pretty much full coverage look and it will always look like your skin. It won't have that visible layer, it won't feel cakey or heavy. It's still a terrific foundation and I still highly recommend it. Um, and it also feels really good for your skin. I know there are a lot of skincare benefits in this one, but does truly feel 
like it improves my skin while I'm wearing it. I know I've talked so much about this foundation on my channel, but I just had to re-mention it and just update you guys that it's still one of my favorites. Now I'm going to move into concealers and I have quite a few here. I think I have five. <laughs> okay. So my absolute favorite everyday concealer is the Lancome All Over Concealer. This one, ever since I tried it the first time, I don't think I put this stuff down. It's truly a miracle for my under eyes. I love how powerful this one is, but it has such a thin, lightweight consistency, and it truly does blur out my under eyes, which is all I could ask for, especially on my more tired days. It also works well on top of all the primers and foundations. I've never come across a concealer with such a thin consistency, but corrects and covers so well. I also enjoy using this as a spot corrector all over my face as well. It has more of a matte finish and that blurring property really aids in correcting the areas where I want to correct further. Another one I wanted to mention that I love spot correcting with is the NARS Soft Matte Complete Concealer. I also really enjoy this one under the eyes as well, but this is my favorite to reach for if I want to not go in with any foundation or if I want to just further correct things as well. It has that soft matte texture given the name of course, but it really helps to cut the shine from pimples, like it'll stop the reflection of light. This doesn't have any glow to it, so I'll completely blur and hide away those areas. So I wanted to include it just for spot correcting purposes. Another concealer that I have fallen hard for is the LYS Triple Fix Full Coverage Brightening Concealer. It works really well with all of the foundations I've tried it out with so far, but especially, obviously, the Triple Fix Foundation from Liss. Did I say Liss? LYS? <laughs> Pardon me. This one kind of reminds me of a dewier, glowier version of the Lancome one I was just talking about but it just looks a little bit more hydrating. It feels more hydrating under the eyes. So if you do struggle with dryness under there, I would really recommend you trying out this one. And given its name, it does truly help to brighten up my under eyes. It's one I've been reaching for if I've been lacking sleep. The next one really took a turn throughout my I guess YouTube career. I used to loathe this one, but I actually adore it now. This is the Dior Forever Skin Correct Concealer. I have been using this a ton. It's a really great full coverage concealer. It feels really hydrating, but it is so powerful. It has a thicker consistency, but it's not like in a bad way. It doesn't make my under eyes look thick at all. You just need the tiniest amount of this stuff and it'll stretch under your eyes. And it's also really great at color correcting. I know I've been kind of in a newer era with this one, but I wanted to mention it anyways because I have been falling for it hard once again. It's been a good year for concealers on my end. And lastly, I had to mention the Fenty Beauty Bright Fix. This is my go-to when I'm in a rush or if I'm doing a no makeup makeup look. It will kind of correct my under eyes while still allowing them to shine through in like a flattering way. Like it's, a, it's always like a cute look. <laughs> but it helps me to brighten it up under there without making it look too much. I think it's going to be a product that I always love and turn to in those types of situations. Now let's move on to powders. And similarly to my good luck with concealers this year, I have quite a few powders to recommend. So I just wanted to quickly mention this one because it's been sold out. I don't know if it's coming back, but in the off chance that it might come back, um, I wanted to recommend the Huda Beauty Cherry Blossom Cake Powder. This has been such a great powder. It's the only one I've been putting under my eyes on the everyday. I really like it because it just adds another layer of brightness under there and it truly works so well. It has the same kind of level of blurring as the Pat McGrath Blurring Under Eye Powder, which is kind of nuts for me to say. But yeah, I don't want to rub it in your faces too much, but this is a really fantastic powder. And if it comes back, I highly recommend it. The only downside is, is it's super, super fragranced. Like sometimes when I'm applying it to my under eyes, it's a little bit much that my eyes squint. So that's the only downside. So if you're super sensitive to perfumes or you don't like fragrance in your products, don't get this. <laughs> but if you don't care, kind of like me and your sniffer's kind of broken, kind of like me, I don't think it'll bug you that much. So I have a couple pressed powder options and some loose ones. I'll start off with the loose powder. This is the Rare Beauty loose powder. This is now my number one favorite loose powder. It's so effective. It really diffuses the look of your pores. It sets your makeup perfectly without feeling tight. It, pro it obviously prolongs the look of my makeup. It keeps my oils at bay. It just does everything I want 
a powder to do and this one looks amazing under the eyes as well so it's kind of a universal all-over powder for me also the packaging makes me really happy because it's less messy I forgot to close the thing so I'm kind of contradicting what I was going to say but if you close the cap you're gonna save a lot of mess in your makeup bag or whenever you're doing your makeup so now for my pressed powders I of course have to mention quickly my Pat McGrath under eye powder I'm not going to spend all day talking about this but this is still my number one favorite powder to put under my eyes it just works well with every concealer it blurs out my under eyes so perfectly and it also stops my concealer from re really settling into my finer lines down there it's been my number one favorite under eye powder for I think going on almost three years you guys are no stranger to that one so now I have two more they're both pressed powders this one here is the LYS triple fix translucent setting powder wow okay LYS really making it into pretty much every category today um, this is a really great just flat translucent setting powder this has replaced my love for the Charlotte Tilbury airbrush flawless finish powder I just think the effect of the blur and it also keeps my makeup looking fresher longer and I also just enjoy the LYS brand a bit more these days I also really love their ethos it also doesn't like enhance the light or anything like that it just is flat matte and it's fantastic and the last pressed powder I wanted to mention is of course the Kosas cloud set I have quite the dent going into this one now and this is my makeup fixer and saver and just I just love this thing so much. <laughs> this one's effect is quite similar to the LYS one, but this one does enhance the light a touch. If you look at this in the sunlight, there is a bit of pearlescence in it, but it doesn't look glittery once you set your face with it. I really like setting my face with this one because it tends to just add more dimension to my face. And it's my favorite to touch up my face during the day because it truly just refreshes it and locks everything in once again. And I've said this recently, but sometimes a lot of times I over apply blush and if I do so I like to add a little bit of this on top and it tends to take it down the perfect amount or if I'm just looking weird in any area of my face a layer of this will usually fix it it's such a game changer and a lifesaver for my makeup life let's quickly talk about setting sprays I have two I'm going to be recommending today one for longevity and one to like rehydrate your face and kind of make your makeup sink in really nicely so that one is the rare beauty what is this called again always an optimist four-in-one spray so I like reaching for this one when I need to take a little chill pill first of all the scent is really relaxing it smells like a spa it reminds me of the Fairmont Banff Springs it smells just like the spa there. You just walk into that place and the whole thing smells like that spa. It's such a magical experience, but this is that in a bottle. It also is super refreshing. It has such a fine mist. So when you're applying it, you don't even feel it landing on your face. You don't have any visible droplets. It also does an incredible job if you do end up adding too much powder to your face. It will kind of bring all those layers into one and just make your face look like skin again. And the other one is the Milk Makeup Hydro Grip Set and Refresh Spray. So this one does refresh my skin, but I always reach for this one when I need longevity. Whenever I sandwich my makeup in between these two products here, that makeup is not going anywhere it's going to last until I take it off but as you can see it's a huge favorite of mine I like to think of this one as my makeup hairspray <laughs> so now we're entering one of my favorite categories which is contour and bronzer I first wanted to talk about this one here because I have a new appreciation for this product this is the Fenty Beauty cheeks out freestyle cream bronzer in the shade amber which is actually my favorite contouring product now I used to kind of neglect this in my collection I almost decluttered it in my last declutter too which would have been a tragedy it's my new favorite contour because it has the perfect amount of coverage I find that there's a lot of contours out there that are just too full coverage so it always looks fake or obvious that you tried to contour your face whereas this has a sheerness so it truly adds a shadow to the areas you contour it looks like it's not doing much but it's so effective so if you're around my skin tone I would highly recommend you checking out this product here because it is the perfect 
contour. So moving on, I know you predicted this one was going to be in here, but of course I had to mention it. It's the Patrick Ta Four Face Cream Contour and Powder Bronzer Duo. So it's the perfect duo. <laughs> you get a cream side and a powder side. The cream side is the contour. So you can see it does have a bit more of a gray shadowy undertone and the powder up here is the bronzer. I like to use either side alone some days or I like to layer them up. It's just such a great versatile product. It's great if you have your entire collection in a makeup bag. It just has two steps in one. And of course the formulas themselves are exquisite. And look at this, another LYS product. So if you're someone who likes a powder flat matte bronzer with no bells or whistles, I would highly recommend this one. This is my favorite for a simple, simple bronzer. It is so effective and the color's perfect. It gives warmth, but it still has quite a bit of neutral undertones in there. Um, so it's not going to look like it's standing off your face. It also has the same diffusing properties as their powder. So as you blend this onto your cheekbones or wherever you're bronzing, it tends to diffuse the look of your pores. So enough said. This might be a bold statement, but I think this is my number one favorite powder bronzer for uniqueness and effectiveness. Yeah, I would say so. That's that's going to be my claim. This is the Glowish by Huda Beauty bronzer. I use this so much. I use the shade 02 medium. It's my favorite because I can apply this in a rush and it will still look flawless. It's such a great buildable bronzer. It's super effective and it has this most gorgeous fine 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 pearl inside um, that it's going to reflect the light subtly so it's going to just look like your skin. Um, I'm wearing it today layered on top of the Fenty Beauty cream contour I was just talking about. I layered it up quite a bit today. I wanted, I wanted it to really pop on camera but mostly I will just add a sheer thin layer of it and I'm good to go. I also feel like I'm gonna have this for life because when I look at it it doesn't hardly look used. I don't get it but it's my favorite. <laughs> and lastly, I have my favorite cream bronzer, which is the Say Sun Melt Natural Cream Bronzer. This is everything I wanted the Chanel Le Beige bronzer to be. It has more shades, of course, in the line, but it also is a bit more neutral, whereas the Chanel one was like pure yellow on my face, which just looked really odd. It has that gorgeous sheerness, but it's still very impactful. So when you apply it, you'll never be left with those incredibly obvious streaks across your face. It always looks soft and it melts right in, but it lasts a long time. And there we have it. Those are all of my favorite bronzers. I feel like I talked about them for ages. So now let's move on to highlighters. I only have two. This is another section I'm always like the pickiest with. So I have a liquid version and a powder version. Let's start off with the powder. Yes, you guessed it. The Ilia Decades Daylight Highlighting Powder. This one acts just like a cream, but it lasts like a powder. Um, it sinks right into your base and just melts in with everything else and just reflects the light in such a gorgeous way. Yes, I, I feel like I've had this forever, but it still remains my favorite. Nothing compares to it. And moving on to my liquid option, I had to mention the Melt Sex Foil. This is what I'm wearing on my cheeks today. This one truly just melts into your skin and looks really natural. If you really like that dewy look without like the dewy feels, like your, my hair never gets stuck into it. It does set down eventually, but my favorite thing about this is that you can apply this with any tool or any manner and it will still look flawlessly melted into your skin. My favorite shade is Stargazer, which has kind of a nudie pink base close to my skin tone with a golden shift. So when it's on my skin, you'll just see the gold. It's amazing. Are you guys ready for my biggest section yet? I think I have 20 things to talk about here. I'm kidding. I have eight blushes to talk about. I had to over exaggerate just to make it seem not so crazy. So uh, I'll kick off with a really easy one, which are the Patrick Ta Double Take Cream and Powder Blushes. I love every single shade that I have personally, and I feel like every other one is gorgeous as well. I might pick up the plummy one and one of the new ones that came out recently. I am showing you the palette that came out during holiday time. I don't think the palette with all three shades are is coming back, but he did release each duo in here separately, like these ones. 
So that's awesome if you did miss out on the palette. But my love for this is very similar to the bronzer and contour duo. I just love the versatility of the product. I love experimenting with layering or mixing the shades, especially in this palette here. I always get a gorgeous result and a long lasting result as well. If you're newer to my channel or if you're newer to these products, he actually suggests that you apply the powder first with a brush, then with a sponge, add a little layer of the cream on top just to rehydrate that area, to lock it in, and to make it look like skin again. I really love that technique as well, but I love using either side alone or even cream then powder on top just for a more matte finish, but for a long lasting finish as well. They're really fun to experiment with and the shades are just everything. They're extraordinary formulas and I hope he never stops releasing more shades in them. I swear if he came out with like a green one, I'd buy it. <laughs> Another very predictable blush that's included in this section is the Rose Ink Lip and Cheek Color. My favorite color still remains to be Foxglove. I do have three other ones in my collection here, but Foxglove is where it's at. I also love using this on my lips. I love how it doesn't have like a white base so it truly looks good when you put it onto your lips. I think it has quite a long lasting finish for a dewier blush but just the way that this wears and feels when you're blending it is so special. I would still consider this my number one favorite cream blush. I have to like control myself to not reach for this on the everyday. I did hide it from myself for a while there but you know, what can I do? I'm, I'm addicted to it. <laughs> Next up is Rare Beauty. I have two formulas to talk about, but I have a new appreciation for the liquid blushes. Um, I didn't super, super fall in love with the liquid blushes when they first came out. Like I didn't reach for them on the everyday, but since they launched newer shades, I have I have used them so much. My favorite shades are Believe and Hope. I like mixing them together or just wearing them on, a, on their own or mixing them with their liquid luminizer for a glowier finish. I think they're really fun to play around in that sense, but they also have really incredible pigmentation and longevity. I always think of these as liquid lipsticks for your cheeks, like they're gonna stay put all day. They're also relatively easy to work with if you figure out how to apply them the best. I like to apply a dot in my palm here and I really like to blend my brush into there to take off a majority of the pigment but also to coat the bristles evenly. Then I'll apply it to my cheeks and I always get a fuss-free application that way with no issues and they build up slowly which the first time I used one of these I think my hands just tooted. Okay ADHD put it away. Um, oh shit, I forgot what I was going to talk about now. Oh my god. Whatever I was going to say, all in all, I love these things and I, I recommend them. <laughs> and their melting blushes are still some of my favorites as well. They have a very unique consistency. They truly start melting down once you have contact with them. When you first put your finger onto the pan, it feels kind of powdery, but then all of a sudden it warms up to your fingertip and it becomes this really luscious, kind of powdery feeling blush. It's really cool to, to experience. And the longevity is really nice because it does dry down to that powdery state once it's on your skin. It also is quite a bit more sheer compared to the liquid blushes. So if this is too um, saturated for your liking, I'd check out these ones. Plus, I mean, look how freaking cute the packaging is. I say it all, all the time whenever I talk about them, but they look like cute little mochis or stones. <laughs> freaking love it. Oh, my favorite shades are nearly apricot or nearly neutral. The last two blush formulas are on the newer side. Uh, so the one I'm wearing on my cheeks today is the Huda Beauty Cheeky Tint Blush Stick in the shade Coral Cutie. I really, really love these. So the two shades I have been wearing the most has been the one I'm wearing today, Coral Cutie and Perky Peach. I haven't gotten to wear these ones yet, but this shade right here, Rebel Red, is so, so up my alley. Like in fall time, that's going to be I'm going to be covered in this. I'll shear it out a bit so you can see kind of the undertone and what it would actually look like on your cheek. Kind of right there. See, it's kind of bronzy, kind of red, kind of sunburnt. Oh, so nice. I fell in love with these immediately because of their ease of use. They also have a fine, 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 fine pearl inside that actually adds luminosity to your cheeks without enhancing the looks of pores. I'm always scared of blushes that have a lot of pearl in them because they tend to really 
exaggerate the look of my pores in the center of my face, but these ones don't. The, they're tiny enough, they're finely milled enough that it doesn't, and it just brings a lot of dimension to your blush look. They're also incredibly easy to use. They melt and really diffuse out effortlessly. I've always used a brush to blend them out, and it's always given me a flawless experience. I actually have been using the blush brush that they launched with these. This little cute brush right here, it's called the Face Cheek Color Brush. It has that angledness, it's fluffy, but it's also sturdy enough to really get a perfect blend. I haven't been a blush stick person in a while, but I think these are changing my mind. And the last one really took me by surprise. When I first went into trying these blushes, I didn't think I was going to really like fall in love with them at all, but these are the Item Beauty Cream Blushes. And this has a very unique formula. Um, I was thinking hard and it does remind me slightly of the glow play blushes from MAC but less pillowy and less sheer. When you touch them they don't really feel like a cream or a powder. It's a perfect mix of both. You can see if I put a bit of pressure onto the pan it does have that pillowy texture but it overall just gives such a diffused softened blush look and the colors are really really cute i think they did an incredible job with this formula i have been wearing the shade it's verified a lot recently it's like a nice nudie shade for my skin tone that suits a lot of my everyday looks it also has that fun kind of undertone that can pull more pink or mauve or neutral depending on the other colors you have going on on your face but overall i've been really impressed by its formula. It's really fun to work with and experience, and I think the packaging is really, really cute. It's really small and like bite-sized, and it also comes with a nice mirror inside. Um, it has it all. And it made me very intrigued in the Item Beauty brand. I definitely side-eyed the brand for a long, long time until I experienced these. Let me know if you're the same. So now that's it for face and cheek products. Let's move into the eye category. So let's start off with brows, first of all. My favorite brow products are still from Kosas. I love, love, love the brow pencil. I just love its versatility. You can use this in so many different ways, but it's a very quick application. The formula itself looks kind of like a diffused powder going into your brows. Like it won't give you that super streaky, hard to blend out mess. It'll kind of just softly fill them in and I love that. But it has a very tiny little triangle shape which is awesome because you can create little fine hair like strokes in the front of your brows or throughout your brows if that's what you do. Or you can kind of tilt it to the side to fill in your brows very quickly. I might have to buy a backup. I, I'm just realizing now that I have like barely <laughs> any left. So that's the realization. I might have to take a little note right now. And I also adore the air brow, specifically the tinted version. I do like the clear one if I'm using all three products one after another. If I use the clear one by itself, I feel like it doesn't do enough. But this, but on top of this, it does so much for me. I'm actually wearing all three products right now, but I just really wanted to highlight the tinted version because it does a lot. It coats your brows, so it makes them look fluffier. It also holds them and adds a bit more volume to your brows, which I really enjoy. This is the first kind of shimmery or pearlescent brow gel that I enjoy. I feel like it does add a lot of definition, but it also makes your brow hairs look like natural brow hairs, if that makes sense. It shines just like hair would. I use the shade black brown in both, but still my favorite brow products that you can get at Sephora. For eye primer, I wanted to quickly mention my two favorites, still the Fenty Beauty one, and I do really love the Rare Beauty one. It took me a while to really fall in love with this one. I think when I first started using it, I used too much, but I really love how this one has like a corrective property, so it really gives you a blank canvas. It corrects like my little veins I have on there or any discoloration and just offers a brightening canvas for my eyeshadow looks. And I still adore the Fenty Beauty one, especially if I'm going to be wearing my eye look for a long day and I really, really, really don't want to encounter any creasing. Um, this helps to keep my oils underneath my eyeshadow look all day until I take it off. It creates the perfect, really strong barrier. It's super waxy. Oh, I forgot to mention that the, I don't experience much creasing with this one. It's really rare if I do. I don't know why I always say rare when I'm talking about rare beauty. It's just, it's just, a, I don't know. 
So now it's time to speak about my favorite eyeshadow palettes. So I have quite a few here. I'm just going to give you my favorites, the ones I find to be the most worth it. So first of all, I have been really loving my experience with the Makeup by Mario Master Mattes. You just get everything you need in a smallish palette and they're great tones. They're just easy to blend. It's easy to approach this palette. It just has all the neutrals you could need for a neutral look or to build a look with other shimmers as well or anything like that it's a great palette to have another one of my favorite palettes is the patrick ta one i saw that he's coming out with a new one i still think this is going to be my favorite though i'm not a huge pink eyeshadow person um, i'm very much into the rest and neutrals and warms and this has all of that for me and i love the inclusion of the cream here I feel like it just makes this even more versatile. I use these often as eyeliners or bases for the other shadows. It always creates such a fun and dimensional look. I also really enjoy how the shimmers up here aren't like the classic super impactful uh, metallics. You can get them to look like that if you dampen them, but they're kind of more sheer toppers, which I love. That's the kind of shimmers that I go crazy for. And I just love how all of them are kind of like that. And the mattes in here are very smooth and easy to work with. It just has everything and more that I could ask for for like a warm warm palette. I'd love to see his take on a cool version. That would be dream worthy. Speaking of cool tones, I wanted to mention this one because I think it's such a fun take on a cooler toned palette. This is the shadow palette I have on my eyes today, even the little liner. This is the Huda Beauty Rose Quartz. Okay, I have a cat hair threatening to make me sneeze. Okay, I'm good. Nope, I'm not good. I think this might be my favorite cool tone palette and it is my favorite Huda Beauty palette. I feel like the formula is different from the other ones I've tried in the past. This one has a lot more ability to layer the shadows on top. I have found in past palettes that her shadows are very, very dry. And once you get that initial layer of a shadow on, it's really hard to build it up. Whereas this one is a lot creamier and the tones pair really well together. And there's just so many fun little shifts and so many things you can do in this palette. Every time I open this up, I kind of feel like I'm falling in love with it for the first time again. Uh, I am wearing this shade right here, uh, Moon Magic, all over my lid and kind of underneath here as well. It's so hypnotizing. I go crazy for these types of shadows where it's kind of blue and pink and violet all at the same time. I, uh, I love it. This one has kind of a green shift and this one, it's these three shadows right here that really sell it for me. They're just... Ooh, everything. I get so excited for it. And of course, as I do in every single VIB video, I always um, mention my favorite bougie bougie eyeshadow palettes. Um, this one has been in every VIB video I think I've ever filmed. The Natasha Denona Biba palette. You just get everything you need in here for a neutral look. I love the inclusion of the cream to powder finishes in here. There's It just makes this palette so much more versatile in my opinion because you can create like eyeliners with them. It's really great for layering purposes. I use the shade spot so much for so many different looks. I sometimes even use it more than my actual eyeliners. It's just a fantastic palette. You get a couple tonal families in there and they're such great quality, of course, since it's Natasha Denona. And now I'm going to recommend my two favorite Pat McGrath palettes, the big ones. For me, the palettes that are the most worth it are the 6 pans or the 10 shadow palettes. I'm going to mention my two favorites of the 10s, but when you're going to be buying a Pat McGrath palette, I want you to love the color story and I want you to feel like you're going to reach for that palette a lot because if you're just going to buy it because I recommend it and it's just going to sit and rot in your drawer, it's not worth the money at all. I want, If you're ready to invest in a Pat McGrath palette, I want you to love what you're getting but I'm going to discuss my favorites, just in case if you're curious. Still one of my big favorites is the five, just because I love the bronzy colors and these shimmer shades over here are so eye-catching. They might look kind of basic when looking at them. I just smacked myself in the face. They might look kind of basic when you're looking at them through like a screen or just on camera, um, but when you get the textures in hand, you'll you'll know what I mean. Like they just create such unique looks because the textures are unlike anything you see in other palettes. So you get a good range of finishes in this one. You get mattes and shimmers and glitters and satins all in one. But I think my number one favorite is Hutopian Dreams. <laughs> this this one sells it all for me. These three shadows here, this one, this one, and this one, sell this thing for me. I can't get enough. I mean. Maybe I should, no. 
I'm so I'm just gonna do it I'm gonna add a layer of this glitter on my eye already just because I feel like it'll suit it but every time I look at this palette I swatch that color it's beautiful I just think the colors in here are really interesting and it's a rainbow palette in a different way like when you see the shifts in person you're like oh there's the blue oh there's the green oh there's whatever other color I forgot to mention and for my eyeliners my favorite eyeliners that you can get at Sephora are still the makeup by Mario pencils they're just great all-around pencils you can blend these out really easily you can create structured eyeliners with brushes you can throw this into your waterline they're great versatile pencils and they come in really gorgeous shades. Uh, there's a purple one, a blue one that are really nice, but my favorites are perfect brown, soft brown, and the black one. Now let's move into mascaras. I have one for the Canadians. Uh, I don't know if you're able to get MAC on Sephora just yet, but I know you can get it in Canada. But for the Canadians, the MAC Stack mascara is really starting to become my number one favorite. It's so easy to work with. You can create kind of a softer layer or you can really build up the intensity. I have never come across a mascara that you can build up layers and layers and layers and layers and it not getting spidery or clumpy or ugly looking at all. It's because of this magic wand. This is the micro one. I don't know where the mega one is, but I use the mega one more just because it gives a quicker effect. Um, but this brush is kind of one of those plasticky ones. So it really combs through your lashes, forces the formula through your lashes and creates the most perfect look and it's also very long wearing it almost acts like a tubing mascara but it isn't it doesn't smudge crumble or flake and it wears beautifully on the lower lashes as well but speaking about tubing mascaras i wanted to mention this one from cali ray this is the come hell or high water mascara this is my favorite tubing one uh, because it is a volumizing tubing mascara so it's awesome it also has a great wand on this one usually with tubing mascaras you'll see the plasticky ones kind of similarly to this but this actually has one of those fuzzy bristly ones which really helps to get that fluffy volumized look um, but it of course is a tubing mascara so it's going to wear beautifully on your top and bottom lashes and my last favorite mascara is the rare beauty one I had to mention this one because it just has every single quality I look for in a mascara it volumizes it fluffs up it fluffs up my lashes it lengthens them it's a really nice long wearing effect and it also is very quick to apply still one of my favorites even though I've been using the MAC stack a ton and now let's dive into the last category which is lips so I have quite a few lip liners to recommend first being the melt cosmetics perfectionist lip pencils ever since these came into my life I have I pretty much use them every day the shade range is perfect in my eyes um, I love the formula because you can get a really structured look or a softened look you can do it all but my favorite colors are bear and cinnamon those are the ones I use the most, but I do really enjoy the entire range. That was an obvious choice. The next one is also quite obvious. Uh, it's the Makeup Forever Artist Color Pencil in the shade Anywhere Caffeine. I've tried a couple of the other colors, but Anywhere Caffeine is it. It suits all of the lip tones I go in with on the everyday, and it also gives that really soft, diffused look. It's really easy to use, it's super glidey, and it's the perfect, perfect universal color for pretty much any lip color I go in with. It's incredible. And the last pencil I wanted to mention is the Makeup by Mario ones. I really enjoy the shades I purchased, especially this shade right here. Where is it? Is it Dimitri? No, Angela. It's this really nice muted brick red. And the other shade I enjoy is Dimitri. That's where, it's, that's where I got that from. It's like a nice contoury nudie warm color but it's a perfect formula once again glides on effortlessly lasts a long time they just come in really really gorgeous colors i think that's why they stand out to me so much so now let's talk about my actual favorite lipsticks and glosses starting off with the glosses my favorite clear gloss is the kosas jellyfish wet lip oil still one of my favorites it's perfect for every day i feel like i could go for another layer while we're talking about it it has such a comfortable formula it's very slippy, never sticky, and it also brings so much like light and gloss to your lips. It's the perfect thickness too. It's not too much for your mouth. <laughs> and come on, the packaging is so cute. It reminds me of like little waves or something. It's so fun. My other favorite gloss is the Dior Lip Glow Oil in the shade Rosewood. This is my favorite color and the one that's most worth it to me because it adds a really cute tint. I love pairing this one with the Melt Cosmetics 
cinnamon lip liner or the or the shade Angela from Makeup by Mario. It adds that rustiness and it flatters the rosewood tone in here perfectly. And it also has such a delightful kind of minty, pepperminty smell. It's really relaxing. And now I have some lipsticks that I think are extraordinary. These are the Merit, what are these called again? The Signature Lips. And these I think will become a lot of people's actual signature lipsticks. They have that really approachable, beautiful texture. They softly build up here. I'll quickly show you. So this is a deep, deeper shade. This is Avenue, I think. Um, so you can see that it initially has kind of a sheerer, but still glowy look, but it also builds up if you want more of an opaque, saturated look. But my favorite out of the two I currently have is Baby, because it's just very soft. Sometimes this looks like a My Lips But Better shade, but just slightly a bit more pink. But I just love its soft texture. It has kind of a powdery feel. Um, it has that slippy texture, which I love so much. And the packaging is, I mean, a showstopper. I love the brown that they used and the gold. I need to try out more from this brand because I have been really impressed by these lipsticks. Moving on, this is the Makeup by Mario Moisture Glow Plumping Lip Serum. I only have the shade Bronze Glow right now, but that might change. <laughs> These remind me a lot of the M Cosmetics lip cushions, but these have a little bit of glitter in them. I would say glitter, yeah. But they're not, it's not super chunky, but it adds so much more light to the lips. It has that kind of gloss in a stick formula. As you can see, it has quite a bit of shine. Here, where's that light? Okay, there it is. You know, you can see it gives like a lacquered look and it does slightly plump, but it doesn't give you that stingy feeling at all. It's kind of like a nice cooling, feeling it's nice and oh my god we're already at the last product i'm going to mention which is probably going to be predictable but you know i had to do it to them i had to do it to them it's the nars soft matte tinted lip balms my favorite shades are intimate and brief encounter just as a little reminder but these are very very beautiful because they're super hydrating but they're matte and they have gorgeous pigmentation. They just add a soft amount of color to your lips. They're super comfortable to wear. If you love or if you're familiar with the Glossier Generation G lipsticks, these are quite similar but a lot more smooth and in prettier colors in my opinion. But there we have it. That's everything I am going to be recommending this time around for makeup. So stay tuned for Sunday's video, which is going to be my hair care, skin care, body care, fragrance, all other things besides makeup. But before I go, I do have a quick question. Would you guys be interested in watching me shop this VIB sale? I did one of these in the past, so let me know if you enjoyed that. But all in all, I am going to be shopping and I will, of course, be trying on all of the products once they arrive. But that's going to be it for me today, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed uh, this VIB recommendation video. If you did, please give it a like. It would help me out so very much. And I will, of course, link all of the products I was just raving about in the description down below. So please check that out and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys!